In Tampa, we have national treasures, and this city television station is bringing you documentation about these treasures. Among them are the mutual aid societies. My name is E.J. Salcinas, and it's my pleasure to invite you to a series of these programs that take you right into these mutual aid society buildings. We invite you to join us. The famous mutual aid societies of Tampa were the forerunners of today's HMOs. They saw their start as the 20th century was about to start. Our mutual aid societies are an integral part of Tampa's rich cultural and ethnic diversity that has made our community so unique and contributed to its greatness. They were never socialized medicine. That was the negative title and publicity given the mutual aid societies by the medical society, both locally and nationally. They felt threatened by the concept of cooperative medicine, also called mutualism. Socialized medicine is government owned and operated with taxpayer dollars. The taxpayer is required and obligated to accept subscription to a government-run national health care. Our mutual aid societies here in Tampa were purely voluntary and totally private money, more like an insurance company. Each member paid weekly or monthly dues, such as $1.50 per month. These organizations were totally locally owned and operated and controlled by its membership with their private funds and pledges, like civic clubs, country clubs, lodges, fraternities, and sororities. In fact, mutual aid societies were much more than health care organizations. They were centers for recreation, sports clubs, education, music, and culture, socializing, networking, as well as comfort and support during hard times and bereavements. The Tampa Mutual Aid Societies serve their membership from cradle to grave. In health care, they provided hospitals, walk-in clinics, physicians, nurses, medicines, maternity ward, long-term care, and also cemeteries. Our Tampa Mutual Aid Societies were organized with corporate charters, rules and regulations, and annually elected their presidents and board of directors according to the needs and wishes of their membership and the challenges of the day. The buildings, hospitals, and cemeteries were privately owned. The federal and state governments were not involved. My parents were naturalized American citizens, originally from two different provinces in northern Spain. My father was a member of the Centro Español Club, and my mother was a member of the Centro Asturiano Club. I was born in the maternity ward of the Centro Asturiano Hospital. My parents are buried in the Centro Español Cemetery in Tampa. I'm proud of Tampa's rich diversity and have a lifetime of personal knowledge of our mutual aid societies. In Tampa, besides hospitals and social centers that are still part of our historic landmarks, by the way, are also found five historic cemeteries. The following are a brief listing of Tampa's famous mutual aid societies. One, the Centro Español, the Spanish clubs. Two, the Italian clubs like La Unione Italiana. Three, the Cuban club, El Circulo Cubano. Four, El Centro Asturiano, the Asturian club. 
Five, the Marti Maceo Club for Afro-Cubans. And lastly, the German American Club. In chronological sequence and with more details, this is how they evolved. The Centro Español was a club formed primarily by Spaniards. One of our early uh, members was not Spaniard, he was Peter O'Knight, who was very prominent in the early years of Tampa. A lot of men were single when they came to Tampa. They had no place to go. They lived in rooming houses. And of course, some of them died, you know, and, and that's when, they, when the uh, uh, cemeteries were established. Because the, the uh, Centro Español, uh, the charter was chartered in the state of Florida in the year 1891. The cemetery didn't open until 1904. Uh, and uh, the uh, Centro Asturiano, uh, the original uh, organizers of the Centro Asturiano were members of the Centro Español. Uh, and they were very, the, a group of uh, the members of the Centro Asturiano were interested in having a uh, hospital like they did in Havana, Cuba, which a lot of them came from Havana to, uh, from Spain to Tampa by way of Havana and, and lived there. And uh, they couldn't get together on it, so they split and built a hospital of their own, which was uh, on uh, Ola, I believe. And then the, the first building, the Centro Español building, was uh, built out of the material that was available here, and that was lumber. Uh, there were lots of, uh, and that had a fire and burned down. And then it's, that's when they built the brick building that's on 7th Avenue, that's still standing today. And the same thing happened to Centro Asturiano. They built on Nebraska and 9th Avenue, and that building was burned down, and they built on the same site. In the late 19th century, the Centro Español, or the Spanish Club, was founded in 1891 and constructed two beautiful social centers, one in Ybor City and one in West Tampa, with theaters, ballrooms, library, gym, and casinos. The, there were so many members in, that lived in West Tampa and so many lived in Ybor City that the, uh, uh, originally uh, the West Tampa people had to go to Ybor City to, for their social events and they insisted that they wanted a building in West Tampa. And this a beautiful building is still standing. To me that's probably the nicest architectural building in West Tampa. Their impressive three-story hospital, built in 1906, faced Bayshore Boulevard, just south of Beta Bay, in the vicinity where the Monte Carlo condos are now located. In 1971, a second hospital was built in West Tampa, replacing the original hospital on Bayshore. In 1929, another Spanish mutual aid society for women and children with its walk-in clinic called La Benefica Española in Ybor City merged with the Centro Español for a fourth historic building. You'll be interested to know that the Chinese families employed at the Bayshore Boulevard Centro Español Hospital are buried in the Centro Español Cemetery. The Italian club, or La Unione Italiana, was founded in 1894 and gave a gorgeous building to Ybor City. Another building in West Tampa called the Sicilian Club, or La Sicilia, was built in 1930. They had theaters, ballrooms, and casinos. Their cemetery is a center of art. The Cuban Club was founded and in 1902 built a beautiful building in Ybor City with theater, casino, ballroom, library, gym, and many of their members 
are buried in the West Tampa Colon Cemetery, originally called Marti Cemetery. In 1902, the Centro Asturiano was formed by the large presence of Spaniards from the Asturian province in northern Spain. A historic landmark, their outstanding building in Ybor City still hosts many social and educational functions in their theater, elegant ballroom, casino, and library. They too built a modern hospital in 1905 that operated until 1990 on 21st Avenue near Cascaden Park. Their two cemeteries are historic treasures also, and one of them is the burial site of Medal of Honor recipient Marine Lieutenant Baldomero Lopez, hero of the Inchon invasion in the Korean War. The Afro-Cubans in West Tampa and Ybor City also formed their clubs as early as 1896. And by 1907, two different clubs merged as La Unión Martí Maceo. Their two-story building was built in Ybor City with theater, meeting room, a ballroom, and a game room. When Urban Renewal took that building, that club moved to another location still functioning in Ybor City today. Lastly, the German American Club, a magnificent three-story structure was built in 1908 in Ybor City, one block north of the Centro Asturiano building with a theater, ballroom, gym, meeting and playrooms. At the end of the First World War, the beautiful facility was sold to the Young Men's Hebrew Association. These mutual aid society buildings are designated as national historic landmarks and we are proud of their legacy. My name is E.J. Salcinas, and we will be taking you to each of these clubs and cemeteries in a series of separate programs on this City of Tampa television station. Join us.